So uh, this last uh, period this evening, I'll say a few words, kind of recapping, summarizing what we've done so far. And then we'll have a short set. Then then I'll take the uh, questions and answers. So um, what I've been trying to emphasize in today's sittings was using the discipline introspection of the mind to try and sort out the different aspects of mind and primarily the difference between the knowing mind and the known or the objects so that which knows and that which is known Uh, a very crucial aspect of this to bear in mind is that both sides of the equation are empty. There's no self anywhere on either end. There's, as uh, Mahasi Saira puts it, the meditator comes to see there is only the uh, object and mind knowing the object and no third besides the third being a self there's nobody doing it uh, thoughts are just a process there's nobody thinking and the knowing of the thoughts is another process there's nobody doing it and if you are clearly cognizant of both ends, if you understand the knower and the known, you see there's no necessity for a self. It's not uh, required in the process. The classic formulation of this is the, in the questions of uh, King Melinda. The King, uh, this is a book that has the dialogues of it. It's, a very, it's an interesting book historically. It's uh, one of the first encounters of East and West. It's a, a Greek Bactrian king ed educated in Greek philosophy in dialogue with a Buddhist monk, Megasena. And a good section of the book is uh, dealing with uh, not-self, the question of emptiness. And uh, the king asks the monk, can you give an illustration, which is a common motif in the book. He asks for illustrations, metaphors. And the, the monk says, I can do so. He says, how did you come to this uh, uh, meeting today? He says, I came in my chariot. And he says, if we were to take that chariot and bust it up into pieces and put the uh, baseboard over here and the backboard over there and the, the axle over here and the, the wheels over there and so on and we made it, uh, a pile of parts could you could you then pick through those and find the essence of chariot and the king said no and after some further back and forth that using a kind of Socratic method he gets the king to define chariot as a designation a name convention that we use when this particular pile of parts is arranged properly then we call it chariot but it's just a name and Nagasena says so it is king with a human being there's consciousness perceptions feelings mental formations and body and when these impersonal processes are arranged in a certain way, then we can call it a human being. <clears throat> I think a, a, a somewhat modernized um, version of this metaphor to show the uh, logical or um, a metaphysical non-reality and non-necessity of a self. And it has no explanatory power, in other words. 
is take uh, the uh, the case of uh, an automobile. You've got a, a Ford or a Toyota automobile, and say the driver of the car knows nothing about auto mechanics. He's completely ignorant, and um, he believes there's a green goblin that makes it go, that lives under the hood and makes it go. And his buddy is, knows everything about cars. He says, you're, you're nuts. There's no green goblin in there. He says, well, what? What makes it go when I turn it on? He says, well, you, you have the, the spark plug fires in the piston. Well, okay, well, the, the green goblin has to, has to make the spark in the spark plug. No, no, that comes from the distributor cap. Well, then the distributor cap is where the green goblin lives. No, no, no. <laughs> and he goes through the whole workings of, a, of an engine. And the whole thing is explained perfectly well just in terms of impersonal processes. One thing is causal factor making another thing work. It's only when you're completely ignorant of how a car works that you could possibly believe in a green goblin. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing with the meditation is we're trying to get rid of this green goblin. You know, the, the idea of... <laughs> 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 The idea of, of a self is something that we construct to explain the workings of the body and the mind when we don't understand them. And it's kind of a useful metaphor for a... Uh, it's kind of a superstition. You know, it's kind of the, the ignorant person imagines a self doing stuff because that's easy explanation. But if you look at the actual processes, you see, oh, there's just knowing in the known. Yeah? And you can break it up in different ways, and that, uh, similarly to the chariot, he used the um, model of the five aggregates. Well, this is another uh, uh, way of dividing up the pies, one found more often in the suttas, where we talk about um, body, consciousness, feelings, perception, mental formations. Abhidhamma divides it into body, consciousness, and the rest of the mental process, the mental formations, perception, and feeling. It's a simpler model, uh, and it emphasizes this key point of the nor and the known. And what we're doing is finding the emptiness in both sides. Uh, it's, this is like the Zen koan of uh, searching for the owner of the empty house. You're searching for the owner of the empty house and not finding him. And then you ask, who's doing the searching? <laughs> Another Zen story that I'm quite fond of is um, the two monks debating about the nature of mind. And one says, mind is like a bright mirror set up in a high place. And it illuminates the 10,000 things. And they are reflected in the face of the mirror thereby. So this first monk, he has the idea of knower and know. There's the mirror and the 10,000 things. But he subtly misses the idea of emptiness. So, but it's not quite right. The mirror is set up in a high place and it illuminates the 10,000 things. But nothing is reflected in the face of the mirror thereby. about um, earlier about the uh, impossibility of actually knowing, of seeing directly the, the knower, uh, turning it in on itself. Uh, there's an image that is useful to contemplate. For, it actually comes from outside of Buddhism. It comes from uh, uh, European alchemy. It's the image of the Ouroboros. This is the snake that eats its own tail. 
It's a ring where the snake bites his own tail. Uh, imagine he keeps eating that tail until there's nothing left of him. Uh, try and imagine that last bite. You know, this is <laughs> this is the uh, the paradox of the mind knowing itself. <clears throat> so this is all. Uh, very important, very deep stuff, and um, this is something we can work on uh, our whole lives. This is a question, what is mind? What is the nature of mind? Is one of the central preoccupations of Buddhism, and it's something that doesn't admit of really of easy answers. You can always continue to unfold new depths of meaning in that uh, exploration. So let's do about a half hour of sitting and then I'll do the questions and answers.